Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, near space parachute jump sets a new record. NBAA's 2014 convention wraps up as a highly successful event. And a new Falcon Airborne service adds alternative lift to AOG support. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. When it comes to setting a record in anything that has to do with aerospace, some records last a long time, but most don't. And such is the case with the record for the highest freefall parachute jump. Only two years ago, Felix Baumgartner set a record for the highest parachute jump when he stepped out of the Red Bull sponsored gondola hanging beneath a gas filled balloon at 128,100 feet. The record was broken just last week when a computer scientist named Alan Eustace parachuted from an altitude of 135,890 feet. During his descent, it's reported that Eustace reached a speed of 822 miles per hour. While similar technologies were involved in both high altitude jumps, there were striking differences. Baumgartner rose to altitude beneath his balloon in an enclosed gondola while Eustace was suspended below the balloon, wearing a pressure suit and literally hanging out in the open. Numerous reports have cited that Eustace works for the Google company, and it would be logical to assume Google had something to do with this. But that's not the case. Eustace worked with the Paragon Space Development Corporation and its Stratex team for almost three years to bring a successful conclusion to this challenge. However, there is also another player in this event, in a press release from Worldview Enterprises, they wrote, quote, Following the record-breaking 135,908-foot space dive accomplished by Google's Alan Eustace and the Paragon Stratex team, Worldview Enterprises, the commercial balloon spaceflight company, has acquired the technology from this history-making project. The acquisition will advance the company's mission to pioneer a new frontier at the edge of space, for travel and research, end quote. Worldview Enterprises is working on a near space commercial project that will carry passengers to the edge of space in a luxurious gondola suspended below a large gas filled balloon. The gondola will return to Earth by means of a large ram air parachute. And oh yes, Worldview is now taking reservations for their first commercial flights. The MBAA's 2014 Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition organizers are reporting that by all indications, the show was a success for attendees and exhibitors alike. MBAA President and CEO Ed Bowen said in part, quote, This year's show was an enormous success filled with announcements and product introductions. The exhibit floor and aircraft displays had lots of activity and excitement, end quote. MBAA 2014, which took place from October 21st to the 23rd, featured about 1,100 exhibitors in the Orange County Convention Center. Additionally, more than 100 aircraft were displayed in several locations, which included a static display at Orlando Executive Airport. More than 26,000 people attended the show, which included representatives from 49 U.S. states and 95 countries around the world. Boland said, quote, Clearly in a host of ways, MBAA's 2014 convention is one for the record books, end quote. Next year's convention will be held in Las Vegas, Nevada from November 17th to the 19th. After these messages, Dassault Aviation improves service for the dreaded AOG situation. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Aero TV or our website, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. When an AOG situation occurs, it's about more than an airplane problem. It also means passengers may be stranded. Recognizing this, Dassault Aviation has introduced a new airborne response service 
that provides not only rapid AOG support, but also alternative transportation options for passengers. The service will involve two Falcon 900 aircraft, one based at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey and another at Le Bourget outside of Paris. The Teterboro 900 will serve North America, Central America, and parts of South America. The Le Bourget-based aircraft will serve Europe, Russia, North Africa, and the Middle East. Each will be able to carry to so go teams and the necessary parts and tools to put an AOG aircraft back into service and provide alternative lift for passengers if needed. Dassault says it's in the midst of a massive expansion of its customer support services, including parts, people, service locations, and digital services. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of In this video, you'll hear a sound and have a view that are a bit unusual. During the flight as an adventurer 2 departs runway 30 for a beautiful day of flying. Search Departing 30 on YouTube. The Board of Directors of Airline Pilots Association International has elected a new slate of national officers to lead the union for the next four years. The election took place during the union's 45th regular biennial board meeting. Captain Tin Canole, a Delta Airlines pilot, was elected to serve as the union's 10th president. He is an MD-88 captain based in Atlanta. Captain Joe DePete, a FedEx Express pilot, was elected as the union's first vice president. Captain Bill Couette was re-elected by acclamation to serve a third term as vice president administration secretary for the union. A 26-year Envoy pilot, he flies the Embraer ERJ-145. ALPA's board of directors also re-elected Captain W. Randolph Helling to serve a third term as vice president finance treasurer. He is currently a Delta Airlines A320 captain. All of ALPA's new national officers will begin their terms on January 1, 2015. After the break, when the hurricanes get bad, who do you call? The hurricane hunters, of course. Stay tuned. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. It's been a busy two weeks for the Air Force Reserve's Hurricane Hunters. The 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron flew their last of 15 missions into Hurricane Ana in the Pacific October 20th, while gathering weather data for the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. On the other side of the globe, the Hunters wrapped up a week-long deployment to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, flying their last Hurricane Gonzalo mission in the Atlantic. Major John Brady, a 53rd WRS aerial reconnaissance weather officer, said in part, quote, It's not unusual to have storms this late in the season, end quote. Brady added that what is extremely rare is to have a third hurricane hit Hawaii in the same season. Brady added that the hurricane hunters only deploy to the Central Pacific when Hawaii is threatened. Dennis Felkin of the NHC said, quote, when you look at the satellite imagery, you're not sure what's going on inside the storm. Sending the hurricane hunters into a storm is the equivalent of going to the doctor's office and getting an MRI." End quote. 
Well, here's some good news for general aviation in Mississippi. The first new runway constructed in more than a decade in the state of Mississippi will be unveiled at a celebratory ribbon cutting and aircraft fly-in at the Copia County Airport on November 1st. The new 4,000 by 75 foot runway with runway lights and pilot navigation aids replaces an outdated 3,000 foot runway. An airport fly-in will be hosted by the county and grassroots aviation, the airport's fixed based operator, along with a special ribbon cutting ceremony as part of the Saturday celebration. The new runway costs approximately $6 million for land acquisition, design and construction. The FAA paid 90% of the project costs with Copia County and the Mississippi Department of Transportation paying the remaining 10%. Before we close, we thought it'd be proper to let you know that yet another of our greatest generation flew west yesterday. World War II Navy pilot Lieutenant Commander Thomas A. Doherty leaves behind quite a number of amazing family members and friends who cared for him a great deal. And that included some of us at ANN and Airborne. Godspeed. Well, that's our program for Monday, October 27th. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And please remember the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.